We ready? Yes, sound check. Ryan, is it okay? Okay, guys, so we're about to start. Um, we have Team Ansel here. Team is an open source game hacker who runs the Thousand Parsec project now and he recently has been involved with bridging the gap between virtual and physical events by doing live streaming. So we're going to have a talk on making video streaming interactive. So, Tim. Um, so. Hi, I'm Tim. That's probably the funniest photo I could find of me. Um, as, I, as the introduction said, um, I'm an open source game geek. I work at Google, um, but none of this stuff is at all related to what I do. Um, um, so I've been doing video streaming for a while, and you may have seen um, various things I've streamed. Um, you, since you're at the conference, you probably haven't seen the LCA streams, but they're using my system. Um, I'm kind of on a vendetta at the moment to um, basically produce live streams and recorded video of all the user groups that we host at Google. Um, as the previous page showed, um, we have like a bunch of user groups that are at Google. Um, so I really want to get the content that is on at the user group um, onto the web so that people who um, are, oops, going the wrong way, um, people who can't make it um, can come and participate. Um, so why um, do you want to do this? It's because um, no matter where you are in the world, you're remote to somewhere else. Um, so like I live in Sydney, there's lots of user groups in Sydney, but I'm remote to Perth or even Canberra. I can't watch or attend the Canberra or Perth things because they're just not there. But there's other reasons why you might not be able to attend. You might have a couple of these things. Um, they tend to prevent you from going out at night because they have to be fed and stupid things like this. Don't know why people have these. Um, yeah, Patrick. Um, so there are lots of reasons you can't actually get to a user group, but I don't believe that should prevent you from attending. If you have a computer and an internet connection, which everybody has these days, um, you should be able to attend. So um, why streaming then? Like, um, why do streaming rather than video? Um, because streaming is a very different experience to watching a video after the fact. When you're watching a live stream, and I hope as, um, as I'm going to show, you can actually interact with the group. You can ask questions that you have. You can heckle, um, as my topic says. And if you join the... Um, the hash LCA 2012 studio channel on IRC or tweet, you could actually um, heckle me right now. So, um, and the other reason is I really want to get video recording done. And it's my um, experience that the best way to get videos produced is to do live streaming. Um, takes more work to do live streaming, which means that you have the video section sorted out and working uh, much, much sooner. And it means there are people relying on you to do the video. They're sitting at home waiting to, um, to see your um, content. So if they don't, um, if you don't get the video working, they're not going to see anything. So it actually puts pressure on you to do a good job and um, get these things done. Um, the reason this is takeaway two is because takeaway one requires a bit of history um, to happen, uh, to understand why um, takeaway one um, happened. So I've been trying to do videos of user groups for about two, three years now. Um, our first attempt was we were recorded with a video camera and then we gave a copy of the, um, 
the video to Patrick, who's actually sitting there, and he hand edited them. They look really flash. He fixed like all the lighting levels and um, all that type of thing, and like made the slides easier to see and stuff. Um, but we kind of ran into a problem. The first video took about a month to get up. The second video took about six months. Um, the latest video we have from that method took about 12 months to get up, um, which is kind of a sad face. Um, so that wasn't obviously working, so we tried another method. Um, here, instead of, um, instead of doing hand editing, we do live editing. So at the event, we edit the video, we mix it. Um, but we still needed to basically take the video off these um, <coughs> CF cards and upload it to YouTube. Process took about 10, 15 minutes. Um, and it seemed to work really well for the first one. It took us less than a week to get the video up. Um, but then we have this same type of progression where every video after it took increasingly a long time to do it. That didn't work. Um, so that's a bit of a sad face as well because um, I really want to get these videos going. So the, um, the next attempt, we used an internal system at Google that allows us to record um, video conferencing. So we'd set up a video conferencing and um, it would all record it and um, we only had to basically cut the end and the um, the end and the um, sorry the start and the end off and click publish and it would upload it to YouTube, um, which seems like it's like five minutes worth of work, um, which meant that the first video was up like two days after the conference. That's like a lot better than the one week the first method uh, the second attempt and the um, one month. So that looks good, but we had this same progression. Um, the second video took us a week to get up, and we just never uploaded a bunch of videos because by the time we got around to it, the automated system had deleted them. Um, so that is also a sad face, um, as you can see there. So the last and final setup, which is what I'm gonna talk about, is um, we do live editing at the conference uh, at the like venue, and then at once the event is finished, I press enter on a script, and the video is up on YouTube um, within like the 10, 15 minutes it takes to do YouTube processing. Um, first attempt, it took me a couple of days to get that script right, so it took me two days. Um, the second video, it took me one day. Um, the latest videos have been up within three hours. I can be at the pub enjoying a drink after the event and go and check our website um, that has the YouTube videos on it, and it's there. Um, so this is what brings me to take away, um, sorry, notice the difference that this number's going down rather than up, um, which is like perfect. This is what we want. Um, so that brings us to takeaway one. The only way I've ever been able to get video up is to finish and upload the video at the event. No matter how well-intentioned you are, it's very easy to put off things. Um, like, I, have to, I work at Google, lots of things to do. It's very easy to say, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. And then it becomes, I'll do it next week. And then before you know it, the automated systems deleted the video and you didn't have to upload it. So the most important takeaway I can give you for this, um, from this talk is that you should finish the videos at the event. Because when you're at the event, you're already there and you're already doing things. So it's only a little bit more effort to run that last script. You want to automate as much as possible so that when you're at the pub, the video is already there. You don't have to worry about it. There's no more work. Um, so that's really cool. Um, so the kind of current solution that we have at Google is this pretty fancy setup. Um, We've got a bunch of cameras mounted on the roof. 
and we've got this lovely mixing desk at the back which has like a camera the cameras are like little things that zoom around in every direction and you've got these really cool joysticks it feels really futuristic and there's a mixing desk which lets you mix the inputs together um, all nice and stuff like that and there's like a preview of what's going out and a preview of the camera um, this is a and it's got like wireless mics in the room and stuff this is a really nice setup um, <coughs> It then pipes into a bunch of flumation, which I'm not going to really talk about at all um, because it's just a piece of software that you download the configs for and run. Um, the problem with this system is, as you can see, it's rather complicated. There's like a bazillion buttons. Um, I ended up going away um, from Google for three months and went, crap, I'm the only one in the company who knows how to operate this system because um, we didn't get any training on it and the AV guys, it's like, it's unique to Sydney. Every other office has a different system. So I was the only person who knew how to use it. And it took me two three hour sessions with really highly technical smart people to teach them how to use this system um, which like and the only people who can use it are Googlers and um, it, you have to be at the Google venue. Um, SciPy has decided that it wants to be less formal it wants to go and have their talks in a pub because you can have drinks that way and just a more social atmosphere um, and you can't do video streaming from there because all the stuff's back at Google, um, which kind of sucks. But um, the other thing before I go on to that is that my talk is about heckling from the clouds. I mean, um, there are a lot of things that give you video streamings of events, um, but um, you have a whole bunch of viewers and in that case they're kind of anonymous and you never hear from them and there's no feedback. Um, what happens if they have a question? I mean the whole point we're doing this live streaming is that they have to be able to interact. If they're not going to interact they might as well watch the video later. I mean it's higher quality, they don't have to worry about bandwidth and stuff like that. So um, I tried to make the video system interactive and there are three ways I've found that people on the internet like to interact in real time. Um, there's Twitter, IRC, and web chat. Turns out that um, Freenode is really great in that it's an IRC, um, it's an IRC channel that has a web chat <coughs> interface. Um, you can kind of see it up there on the screen. Um, that is a web chat interface that um, connects to IRC. So I can solve two of those um, problems by using free nodes and this what lovely web chat. Um, but you also want Twitter because Twitter's the hot thing at the moment. I don't know. I don't really like it, but people do. So I built this web page that basically um, has the video, has the Twitter stream, and has, um, has the chat. Um, so this is, this is the interface you get at the moment if you're in the room. Um, it's designed to be projected up on the screen so that when I'm in a talk I can see that um, people here are, um, people here are telling me I have the wrong channel for this thing. So I can fix that and I can talk about that. Um, so if you have a second projector like we do at Google and we do in here because I brought a projector, um, you can actually interact with the audience. The people who are on the other end um, see a slightly different interface. Um, they basically still get chat still get Twitter, but they get a video. Um, so if you're at the home at the moment, um, um, if you're at home, you see this interface here. Um, so at the bottom, because I don't have much space, you get the little Twitter thing. It cycles through the most recent tweets. Um, you get the IRC channel, which lets you chat about whatever the presenter's talking about, and you get the video. Um, it's currently broken because I didn't have a video running at this um, time, but 
you get to see what's actually going on and it gives you an interactive thing. And as I was saying, um, in the room you get this interface which really brings them in. It's really um, surprising how much having feedback in real time projected somewhere where you can see it um, affects both the, um, the people who are out there bringing them into the room and the interactions in the room because if you're really scared about asking a question um, you can basically tweet the question instead. Um, we had a group of, um, we did use this for um, Girl Geek Dinner, and they're really, really Twitter mad, those um, girls, and they, but they're really shy. So this interface was really good because it allowed people to basically sit at the back of the room, grab out their laptop and tweet um, questions. It's a, it's a kind of transforming, um, system. There are a couple of problems with it. Um, the video has a delay of about 15 to 30 seconds, which means that sometimes the speaker's moved on before you can ask your question. Um, you need um, dual projectors to use it. Um, but the other positive thing that you get from this is you have people doing live QA on your video recording. They yell at you if the sound's too low or if you're not spending enough time on the slides like today um, during the keynote um, somebody was watching the live stream and saying look you're switching to the slides and back again too quickly I can't read what's on the slides which let us fix that problem while the video is being recorded um, which means you get better quality videos than if you're trying to do it by yourself and you get this if you get distracted somebody in the room can go hey Tim the guys on IRC can't hear anything you've got the mic still muted and I can fix that straight away so your video recording is better quality because you're doing streaming um, so what's the future I, my aim is to video all the user groups not just the ones at Google and to do that I need something that scales um, there's only one of me and I can't be like everywhere in the world at the same time as much as I'd love to. Um, so I need a system which other people can use. And, oops, where's my last slide? Um, that slide, oops, that slide is supposed to be back up and it needs to be reproducible. Other people need to be able to use this system because Although I can go around the world and give talks about this system, other people actually need to be able to implement it. Um, so this is where I've come to. I've come to a portable video setup. I've taken what the Google guys have and spent way too much money that I don't care to think about in a room and condensed it into a box. Um, this is the box here um, that you can see. It's currently projecting stuff up. Um, it uses a budget Lenovo ThinkPad that you can get anywhere in the world. Um, it uses a twin pack to capture the actual slides, um, like the videos here at LCA and at past conferences like PyCon. The twin pack captures the slides directly from the um, the laptop so you get really nice clean slides as opposed to like somebody trying to point a camera at a projector. Um, and it uses Telstra NextG for backhaul. Um, obviously in other countries you'd have to use what elf, whatever else you have, but here Telstra NextG pretty much gets you anywhere in Australia which is reasonably populated, you have a backhaul link. So this doesn't depend on the venue having wireless, it doesn't depend on the venue having any particular setup. Um, all you need is a PowerPoint to plug in the box effectively. Um, it's light enough to carry around, it's a little bit heavy, it's about 12 kilos so I wouldn't want to lug it too far but it's, it's reasonably light and as I said it only requires a PowerPoint. I have a complete bill of materials um, for this so if you can build, um, if you want to build one yourself you can. I've also got a complete instructions on how to set up the software, what customization I had to do. The only thing I don't have at the moment is how to like 
cut out the holes in the right place and stuff like that. But I now have a template so I can dismantle this and basically give you blueprints on how to do it. Um, so this is really awesome because I can take this to anywhere in Australia and start doing video streaming. It's not too expensive either. The base setup, which is just the um, video capture and the next G and all that type of thing, is just under $2,000, $1,800. If you want a truly portable setup, which you can take anywhere, whether they're like, say, take it to Ayers Rock or something like that. So you want to add a projector and a screen and a speaker, it bumps it up to like just over two and a half, $2,700. For $2,700, I can bring a portable, um, basically conference system with live streaming. Um, I think that's pretty awesome. I think we can do better. Um, I'm looking at ways to minimize this cost and basically minimize that box. I'm not a very strong guy. I prefer to carry around something that fits in my pocket rather than something that's 12 kilos. So we're gonna improve on it, but I think it's pretty awesome um, to have something that we can already use. Um, Oops, wrong direction. The other thing I've been really, really concentrating on is it's, it needs to be able to be used by people who aren't video AV nerds. Like, um, it needs to be a one, two, three solution. And I, hopefully I'm gonna demonstrate that this system meets those goals. Um, so this is kind of the walkthrough of how it gets you to set up. So I'm now going to um, try a live demo. Um, can I have a volunteer from the audience? Preferably not you, because you've seen the system before. But Kai. Um, so I'm gonna shut down this system, and then I'm going to ask Kai to basically set up a video streaming system for me to give a five minute lightning talk. So, um, demos are always risky, so please bear with me while I shut this down. Um, and just to be clear, you've never seen this before. This is like the first. Um, <laughs> there's nothing up my sleeves. <laughs> there's nothing up my sleeves. Have we met before today? <laughs> um, so, let me take it apart and shut that. And put the case lid back on because if you can't get it open then nobody's going to be able to view anything. So this is kind of what it looks like when it starts out. Um, as I show, the instructions start on the case. Um, you don't want to open it from that side at the moment. Uh, so here goes nothing. I have never done this before, so you'll probably find all the bugs that I didn't find at 3 a.m. this morning. Um, so go right ahead. So this is the first time a user a first time a user has touched this box apart from me. So. Do we get the instructions the wrong way around? Yes, I do have the instructions the wrong way around. You found the first bug. Right. Put it on the bug track. If you break it, you have to pay for it. Um, one thing I haven't been fixed yet is that you need to be careful when opening this, but otherwise everything will fall out like that. Yeah. Um, I, haven't, I need to put a hinge on it. You need to pull up yeah, I the... I, I you got it. it. Yep. Yeah. So that's the hardest part of this process, if everything is working. Where the instructions go? Let's see. No instructions here. They're on the top of that. Okay, second thing to fix. Um, so the instruction said to open the laptop and turn it on. Oh, great. I can do that, I guess. What was the first bug? First bug is the instructions were upside down on the front of the case. <laughs> Okay, so you guys can't see this, but the computer is now booting up. 
Um, I kind of need like a camera to show you what's going on, but um, the computer is booting up. And as you can see, it's a Ubuntu-based system. And in theory, if everything is working, we now have instructions. So I'm just going to turn this around to show people. Um, sorry if you're up the back, you're not really going to be able to see this. But if you look carefully, the first instruction is to plug in the power. Um, you don't want to be video streaming off a battery because um, it will basically suck all the power and then lose power halfway through your video stream, which kind of sucks. So this won't work against rock. It will if you bring your generator. <laughs> uh, to the weight, of is course. That bank, is that in your cost? No, sorry. <laughs> Um, so on the, f on the thing you see a picture of the plug and once you plug it in it changes to being a plugged in plug and lets you go to the next step. So step one done. So as you can see first thing is we have to do battery power and the second thing is the networking which I forgot to turn off so it's already working I think. I think so. If you press there, as the instructions say. Yep. Ah, yep. Yep. Connected. So we now have network connectivity. Um, yep. So if we go to the next page. Okay. So we now have instructions on how to connect the presenter's laptop. So I am going to disconnect from here so he can connect me up to the system. There is a little bit of um, knowledge you need to know. You need to know what a VGA cable is. Um, so that is a little bit of knowledge that I haven't um, fully replaced yet. But there's my laptop. And the instructions tell you which, um, which plug to plug it in. They're all color coded. Which projector are you planning on using next? That one. Pardon? The, the cord you just dropped on the floor, did you use that instead? Um, it's not going to reach, and I don't think I have the extension adapter. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah, I guess it is portable. We can move it over. Mm. Okay. Let's move it towards me. Um, so it tells you to basically um, plug the projector into thing and if everything is working correctly you can't live stream and talk about live streaming come on hmm. um, can you go back one and then forward one sure Well, we found another bug. Uh, the third one, actually, because it still says recheck network. Yeah, there's supposed to be a little video here, which is not showing up. Is the cabling all right? I mean, that, yeah. that would be the... Yeah, we're getting a thing up here. Right. So that's kind of interesting. Let's go like this and go reboot. The other thing about this system is it's designed that if you get stuck anywhere, you just reboot it and it goes back to the start. Um, it's kind of a stateless system, so hopefully rebooting it will fix the problem. <laughs> Have you tried turning it off and on again, right? Um, as you can see though, the system doesn't interfere with the actual projection. We still have projection even though this system's misbehaving, um, which is really, really important because you don't want your system to be the reason that the user group didn't happen. Okay, we're at the power thing. And... Hey, yeah. Little note, twin pack doesn't have power, even if it's off, that fails, it doesn't pass it through. I'm pretty sure it has power. 
your statement of it won't interfere as long as it has power. Ah. So I. I don't know why it doesn't have power. So as I said, demos can be interesting. Oh, there we are. There we go. Um, so now if you look on the screen, you'll see, um, I'll very gently turn it around. You will now see that we have a little projection up here so that they know it's working. Um, so if you go to the next step, why don't you come around there so that people can look over your shoulder. So the next thing you have to do, as it says, <coughs> it's just right here. That's the microphone. Yeah, it's just here. The thing glowing blue. Oh, fair enough. Okay. Yay. And if you can see here, if you're up the front, you can see it's actually giving him a live preview of what the, um, the camera is showing. So he can place it in the right place to capture my face. <coughs> Yep, um, we use a webcam because um, the actual thing uses picture in picture, so um, a webcam that does 720p is almost as good as a commercial camera. If we're not done in five minutes, then something else has gone horribly wrong, so. I can't mount this one because we don't have anything to mount it with. Yes, we do. <laughs> this here is a mounting stand that I put together so that we didn't have to. Um, ooh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a bit of English confusion. Here I'm talking about those speakers, not me. Ah, okay. Um, <laughs> and you might want to turn it on as well. So, although ideally with these type of systems, if you're like an AV guy, you absolutely hate me at the moment because um, what I'm doing is I'm taking a microphone and putting it near a speaker. Um, this, however, is the easiest way to capture the sound in this room without having to deal with extra cables. Uh, it also works really nicely in that um, it can be reused as a wireless mic system um, if you're using it in the completely standalone setup. Pardon? Does it? No, it doesn't fit. You want to do that. Yeah, so you should be able to see on this little thing is a um, volume monitor. And the aim is to get the volume monitor so that it flashes about orange when the thing. Is it on mute? No. 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 Hello? Unmuted? And we just lost the picture. Um, why do we? Oh, because my laptop decided to go to sleep. Fair enough. Yes. Okay, there we go. Hello, hello. Is it? Yeah, it's bouncing around. You might want to increase the amplification though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, hello, hello, hello. We're cranked up all the way, but the speaker's up there. and. The yeah, so there. we would need to mount it up there. But if you go to the next step, yeah. um, you are now video streaming. Um, in a second, the video of the video streaming should pop up. <laughs> Let's see. So in theory, 
If we go to the interface, <coughs> hmm. which stream are you? It, there should be a new portable stream appearing. Um, but I seem to have forgotten to start the other side. This is what happens when you finish things on 3 a.m. in the morning. Um, Do you want to take questions now? What yep, I'm doing? happy to take questions. Because um, I bet the basic time is over, so. Yep. One. You have two microphones, but one of them work. <laughs> So I'm just curious why you don't use a webcam mic with echo cancelling ACE. Um, because the idea is that... Um, what did you say? So, a webcam mic with a speaker. So the question was, um, why don't you use a webcam mic for the speaker? And the reason is that um, the webcam mic doesn't work very well. And at this type of range, um, you tend to get the audience around you at the front. Um, the actual wireless speaker system allows you to take um, the sound from the room, which may include other things like music, or if you get a speaker, um, sorry, an audience question, the mic in the room um, might, oops. So what we've noticed when we've set up systems where we've had a mic input from a speaker system is that there is a lot of feedback um, from the audience and uh, the DSP has to do a lot of work to handle all the uh, audio that's actually coming into the microphone. Um, I haven't found it to be much of a problem um, myself. We're just going to try another reboot. Uh, Tim, I, I think I'm in your target audience. Cause, here. Hi. Uh, Hi, um, I think I'm in your target audience because I, I tried videoing our last uh, Android users group down in Melbourne and yep. it wasn't a spectacular success. Um, the, I guess my first main questions are like in terms of your bill of materials, I didn't see anything about wireless mic or um, a video camera. So the which bill of materials includes everything in this box. It doesn't include the generator and it doesn't include the um, the video protection system, but if you go, um, when no, I no, but sorry, my question was like basically, um, I, I was wondering what your recommendation is is for a video camera and like microphone. So in the bill of materials, there's a um, a what is it, Logitech 720p wireless webcam, um, wired webcam. Um, there's also a um, wireless mic system you can pick up from JCAR. It's all in, like, when I give the slides, you can actually click on the, um, the, um, the link. I had a link to the bill of materials and it lists yep. you all the parts, where you can get them, how much they cost. Oh, um, cool. So. Ex Okay, it's now sending. It's just been um So anytime you have a back channel like IRC or Twitter, yep. um, at Mozilla we've had a lot of complaints with the uh, the delay that the speaker is thirty seconds ahead of whatever you say. Yep, that is one problem. Um Is there anything you can do with the motion to reduce the buffering or something so that there's I mean, it might maybe more likely to drop, but at least people are closer to the to the real time. Um stream. there is, but um the problem is the next G 
link is only so powerful, so we have to compress it quite a lot. And when you're compressing, the longer you, you buffer, the better compression you get. Um, so. Yep. Yeah, so what this, the way this is, so the question was um, normally at a conference you don't have much bandwidth and everybody who wants to watch it is going to saturate your link. So the, what this is built in a two part system. There's the capture device which captures it, compresses it, and sends it to an encoding machine. The encoding machine is in the cloud, if you want to put it that way, but it's a server on a high bandwidth connection. The people who are watching the stream connect to that, not yeah, to... My, my point was that even with that kind of a design, um, yep. with a big enough event, you're going to probably have multiple layers of relay downstream of that. So getting yep. too hung up over the interactivity I think is, is sort of a, a, a misdirected concern. I understand so, why it would be nice to be able to be more heckleable, but yep. um, my observation's been this stuff works great for the sort of normal Q&A session at the end of a talk and less well for interrupts. Yeah, so this is designed for a small user group. Um, we're using it for LCA because um, we kind of um, had last minutes to set this up, um, but it's really designed for a small user group. It's not designed to do DebConf type thing. For somebody like DebConf, you have a dedicated AV team, you have people dealing with it. Um, so the other thing is the flu motion system we use. If you can add up to um, six layers, and as long as it's um, as long as all your machines are in the same, basically, vicinity, um, all you're adding is the, um, basically, the ping time. So if you start up this, you can start up the server side on Amazon EC2, and um, you need um, one um, of the really, really big instances to do the encoding, and then you can pick up, say, 12 tiny instances um, that just basically do bit schlepping, um, so you don't saturate one device's into instance. So that adds like 20, 30 milliseconds. Um, so interactivity should still um, um, still should be okay. Um, seems the demo gods are not. Ooh. That's looking more promising. Tim. Yep. So I assume user groups have to obviously pay for a cloud VM somewhere, right? Yep. We have streams. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> streams go all the way down. <laughs> um, <laughs> So obviously this software needs a little bit of work. Um, it's getting there. Um, I hope to like refine it as I use it for groups like Slug and stuff like that. Um, so I, as I said, I want to get this system reproducible so anybody can build one of these. Um, so if the Perth group wants to have um, like their user groups, they can go to a list of materials, um, a list of materials that um, that have like um, where to buy all these things. You put in basically one order from each thing. You get all the parts. You spend two days putting it together with um, uh, some like power tools. It's actually quite fun to work with power tools. I don't normally work with power tools, and. Um, then you put it together and you download the software and it's done. Um, the instructions are quite complete and so is the build of the materials. I've, got, I've gone as far as included like the pot of paint that I use to paint the thing black. So um, it's really, it's, I've tried to be as thorough and as complete as possible. Um, as I said, I want this to scale. I don't want um, this to be just me doing something. I want to see other people doing it. Um, so thank you very much for coming on to my talk, and I hope um, just, just 
just wanted to add one thing. Was that Patrick, use the mic. I just wanted to add, oh, he wouldn't give it to me. <laughs> this all started from us wanting to make the, our lug more accessible to people, not just so they could hassle Tim and everybody else, but to actually make it so it's easier for people to join in, but also to encourage people who had never been to actually come because they could see what it was like, see what was happening, see that nothing strange happened to people and there was no weird process you had to go through. And there were just, it was a very friendly place to go. So there was a couple of, no, well, nothing strange on camera, but when it's live, it's hard to hide it. So that part of the motivation was also to do that, but Tim's put a huge amount of, of effort into doing it. And it's taken probably about two years to get to here. So yeah. Something that's so as I, as I was showing the history, we tried multiple different ways to make this work, and it, it isn't until I've gotten to this stage that I've come up. Um, I've gotten to the live streaming stage that I've come up with a solution where I have gotten 95% of the videos up within four or five hours. The only time I have had problems is when um, the speakers have. Um, had said interesting things about their employers and stuff like that. So they haven't want the videos up. Okay. That has Tim, been the problem. We're really out of time. Yep. No so worries. on behalf of myself and LCA team this year, we want to thank you for your talk. Thank you very much. I'll be around, so if you want to come and talk to me about it, please do.